The decision to move into mass timber was not taken lightly. Chris spent five or six years really delving into mass timber. You know, what is it? How do you make it? Where is it used? How do you bring it to market? We're not going to be able to grow our business by gaining more timber to harvest. And, uh, you know, there's a variety of different reasons that are impacting the harvestability of British Columbia right now, but, you know, ultimately it's going to continue to plateau or decline slightly for, for quite a few more years ahead of us. So for us to stabilize our business and grow our business, we knew we had to focus downstream. So we already see timber as being a huge advantage in terms of sustainability over concrete and steel. The carbon footprint is much less. So what we need to do is to be trying to push timber into buildings as much as we can as being a better choice. And the beauty of this is what some are saying is that these walls will actually be recyclable and reusable in a different application more than 100 years from now, today. Kolesnikov Lumber was born in 1939, and it was born by three brothers. They started with a, a single cylinder gas engine that ran a, a pulley that ran a head saw and a carriage that just ran back and forth on rails. My dad um, got yanked out of school in grade five, and so he came in and started working at the sawmill as well. That's how that evolved, and so for us now, as a company, we see the sawmill as one piece of our business, as Kolesnikov Lumber, and then we see the manufacturing of mass timber as Kolesnikov Mass Timber. There's a lot of challenges that we deal with every day in our world. Everybody is dealing with these, and we have to come together and come up with solutions on how we're going to be looking at things like climate change, or how we're going to be innovating, or how we're going to change our forest practices. Those types of things, that's what's going to make real change. Technology is advancing. And I think what we've keyed in on here on Mass Timber is just the ability now to really change and help shape and grow the construction industry. So we can say after we have installed the machine, we are, we are consulting Kalesnico with uh, information about what they can do to go into this market with, with the best panel on the market. And uh, now we can see the world is asking for it. Our business needs to be adaptable in order to survive, but also this business needs adaptable people in order to drive it. We employ now over 200 people. You can have a mass timber plant that has all the state-of-the-art equipment, that has all the bells and whistles, but really that plant is not worth anything if you don't have passionate people who want to run that equipment. If you're passionate about it, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, and you're going to be able to be good at your job and be successful. We're proud of the history of Kolesnikov. The first generation talked about if you take care of the land, the land will take care of you. We've carried that through to the fourth generation. We now talk about from seedlings to solutions, and we're proud of that. On average, Kolesnikov is probably planting somewhere in the neighborhood of half a million seedlings, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less. It depends on how much harvesting we've done in the previous few years. It's very rewarding to see an area where we went in and harvested, and then we're able to replant, and then to see the trees grow. And they're so green and they're so vibrant. That's really rewarding. Our business goes from a, a structural two by four to an 18 story building now. What's unique about this build is that every unit has an exposed wall, an exposed ceiling with some beams and columns as well. It really surrounds the buyer, the homeowner, with that feeling of mass timber. Now there's of course areas of research into this that are showing that people who are surrounded by buildings or environments that are a bit more natural in their appearance or, or construction, it helps to reduce stress in people, it makes them feel better in their everyday life. People are spending time in buildings, they don't have the luxury that I have to be in the forest a couple days a week. That's bringing the forest to them a little bit, I guess. So we're far beyond just harvesting or sawmilling and, and now we have the ability to really impact the global dynamics of construction and have a strong impact on the environment itself. So there's lots of amazing opportunities ahead for us. I think that going back through the generations even, we've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. And I think that it's always been something that has driven us. We are farmers of the land. And our credo of taking care of the land and the land will take care of you very much falls into that. I have five grandchildren that I'm hoping are going to be in this business one day, and if anybody needs trees, it's us. So I don't think that it would be in our best interest to go 
and not take managing the forest seriously. And that's the exciting thing. It's, it's an exciting piece to be a part of and it's nice to be optimistic about something. It's nice to have hope and to feel like you're part of something that could be a solution.